So what do you need to know when you export a SketchUp model into 3D Max? The most important thing here, for example, is that these plants are made of a big number of polygons. To correct this, I break normals once again. And now each polygon has no smoothing groups or same direction normals that serve to smooth the drawing. And so here's our new geometry. The rest of the object can be remodeled in the same way. Hi everyone, today I'll show you how to export a 3D model in SKP format from SketchUp into 3D Max. So first things first, I open a file in SketchUp. And this is a model of a recreation complex. The navigation here is slightly different from 3D Max. To rotate the scene, I keep the mouse wheel pressed. And to shift the scene, I keep the mouse wheel and shift pressed. And I won't linger on these technicalities. Just keep in mind that in SketchUp, the hotkeys may have different functions. So in this scene, we have a landscape. There's some houses, some plants, and lovely things like that. So doing left mouse clicks on these objects, I can see that they're arranged in groups. So these are all grouped objects. So for instance, I select this house and slick explode. And here, I ungroup this particular group, so I split the house into small subgroups. I can select any subgroup and delete it. So what do you need to know when you export a SketchUp model into 3D Max? The most important thing here, for example, is that these plants are made of a big number of polygons. So that means that the grid is very dense. And in 3D Max, we're gonna use other plants, which means that we can delete these over here. So we only need, like, basically we need the geometry. Some objects will be used solely as references or dimensions. For example, this corner, this corner sofa here, it's not refined enough to be used in exterior visualization. So we need a well-refined model for that matter. And this sofa is of no actual use to us. So the same applies to the plants and some other objects in the scene. And once again, we're going to use the sofa as a reference for dimensions and we'll place, I'm sorry, we'll replace it with a more refine object and 3D Max. So our current task is to get rid of the elements that we don't need. So I select these plants and press delete. And you should be careful though that see this blue frame selected other things as well, which means you can accidentally delete a part of geometry below. All right. So I press the G key and deleting the rest of the plants. Okay, so now we need to export this cleaned up file. So I head over to file, then export, and choose 3D model. Now, pay attention that here, the default format is FBX, but you can select any other format. Unfortunately, you can't select 3D Max because it's, a not, it's not a cross-platform format. But the available formats include OBJ, 3DS, FBX, and others. So I choose FBX because it contains the most information. And I click 
option here and here you can select units. So these units are typically centimeters, millimeters, inches, and so on and so forth. But in this particular case, I'll leave the default setting. So you can also change the vertical axis. In most of the programs, the vertical axis is Y. Also, you can check the box, which says Expert Texture Maps. Other settings include Triangulate all faces, Expert only current selection, Expert to sided faces, and so on. All of this is switched off by default, and we won't need it. Just so you know that you can use this menu to export texture maps, or you can choose not to. So I'm waiting for the export to complete. And so in this window, we can see export stats. Here's the, the number of exported polygons and the number of materials. So let's go ahead and open 3D Max. And head straight over to File, Import, and select our model and click Open. We can leave all the default settings as they are. But I'm still gonna check some of them. For instance, smoothing groups. If your model is not an architectural model, but some other type, you might need smoothing groups. The default units of measurement are usually millimeters or centimeters. But keep in mind that system units don't usually match the units used in SketchUp. Okay, the model has been imported, so I expand the window with perspective view and switch to the main view. And look what we've got here. A whole bunch of artifacts, which isn't good. So we need to apply viewport clipping. That means that we need to cut off a part of information on the front view. On the right side here, we have two sliders, a top one and a bottom one. And the top slider clips the back part of the viewport while the bottom one clips the front part. So let's go ahead and zoom in on the object and move the bottom slider up just a little bit. Okay, so we've resolved the problem with the viewport. Now our next task is to remodel the architecture. We can delete the elements that we don't need, like this landscape here. We don't need to remodel it. It's best to delete it actually. So. If, however, we do need to remote, uh, remodel it, we can try and get rid of all these artifacts. And I select all and clear all smoothing groups. If you cleared smoothing groups, but nothing changed, you need to edit the normals. So select the added normals modifier. To select all normals, I pick the whole thing once again. We can see them now. So we can see them now. So I press Ctrl and A and click break and unify. If the geometry contains errors, then after unifying normals, you may still have some of the artifacts left. But this means that the angles between polygon edges are too large. To correct this, I break normals once again, and now each polygon has no smoothing groups or same direction normals that serve to smooth the drawing. So I convert this to editable poly now, and this is what our landscape looks like at the moment. You can use it as a, a reference for dimensions, or you can remodel it using the method I showed you in other tutorials. But now we're gonna focus on architecture. So let's go ahead and delete things that we don't need. Right, so what makes this geometry different? 
from the one created in 3D Max. It's that it's split into individual planes, where each polygon is split into planes. So when we're creating a scene like this in 3D Max, it's made from a closed box, from mesh. But here, this wall is made of individual elements. See? You can remove them, I'm sorry, you can move them around, lift them up, put them down, and so on. So these aren't closed objects. And the whole model is made of these individual elements. Take a look. I select this element here. It's selected as a single polygon. It's isolated from the basic geometry. And now let's take a look at, at the materials. So I open Material Editor and click on the eyedropper icon here to pick material from the house. And this is a multi-sub material that has three channels. Now let's pick material from the lawn. And this is an, this is an individual material. Let's, let's do this again. See, here's another material. So these materials even have common stacks. So let's copy this one. Anyway, you can see when you're using FBX format, some polygon materials and IDs are imported as well. But as for geometry, it needs a lot of work. So let's take this barrel. It's made of segments. And to create a high quality visualization, you need closed geometry everywhere. It must be solid. So we can't afford to have these gaps here. Okay, now let's try to do something with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and isolate this element here. And if it has a square, rectangular, or any other simple kind of shape, we can wield together its points. So I select weld. You see the borders are gone. So we now have a single solid object. But this trick doesn't always work. Let's take this wall object here. The roof and the walls of the top floor. There are holes everywhere. I click point selection, select all points and apply well. And the holes are still here. So we need to close these holes by using a tool like a bridge and cap. And to be honest, it's a, a very meticulous work. Unfortunately, in this case, scripts are mostly useless. Okay, so now we've got a cloud of polygons in our scene. And we need to remodel all of this. So let's take this floor, for instance. And we need to remodel it using 3D snaps. So I select plane and then I enable auto grid. Then I click on 3D snaps and check the vertex box. And now moving from one point to another, I'm creating a plane and the plane is attached to the wall surface. Reduce the number of segments and convert the plane into editable poly. Also here, I add an additional edge and also align it. Next, click edge selection and create the geometry. snap to the corners of the existing building in order to accurately re replicate its shape. 
or you can make the contour of the building. But since our house here sits at this angle, it can't use one and the same method all the time. So I'm going to go ahead and work the walls. And then I used the weld modifier to weld together the points. As for the reference object that I use for dimensions, I can either delete it or hide it in a separate layer. All right, and so this is what we've got based on the object that was split into planes. I created this wall over here. Now, to remove the artifacts, I clear smoothing groups and so here's our new geometry the rest of the object can be remodeled in the same way take a look at this remodeled house for example this model already has some texture see see this style now let's open a group and examine the objects and I isolate selection by pressing Alt Q and this here is a solid 3D object. This is one remodel floor. This is another one. So these details were modeled from basic boxes. So be sure to use 3D snaps when doing the remodeling. Now, if your SketchUp model has a complex shape, and you can weld points together, it needs to be remodeled. There's a bunch of scripts that can help you fix borders, but the best way is to do remodeling using 3D snaps. So that's my advice to you. Now, this is how we handle SketchUp models. And this model is a good enough, uh, it's good enough for clay material, a render when you need to set up a perspective, but for final renders, when you need to make refine adjustments to the scene, you definitely need closed geometry. So make sure you remember this. I wish you seamless exports and imports. Hope you learn how to handle the models created in other programs and see you in the next lesson. Bye.